I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about JavaScript diagramming, SAS, HTML5 form elements, and more. Let's check it out. First up is macaw, like the sound that a bird makes. It's basically a code savvy web design tool. And what I mean by that is that it's a Mac app that's coming soon to the App Store that will allow you to actually design your websites in an application rather than designing it in like Photoshop or which I guess is an application technically or in code and designing in the browser. So it's a little bit different in that it actually will output code. Now, we just talked about a tool similar to this called Webflow on last week's episode. And this tool is very similar, except instead of being in the browser, it's actually a Mac application. So as you can see here, pretty similar in that you can adjust all of the different CSS properties using this WYSIWYG interface. It will go ahead and output code, it does a bunch of cool responsive and typography stuff. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, they say that Macaw is built on this revolutionary engine called Alchemy, which will produce code that you'd be proud to hand over to developers. And they offer up this example where they have this button class, which I presume is applied to all of these buttons over here on the left. And then they have these secondary classes that actually just apply a different background color, which is the only thing that's different between each of these three buttons. So Alchemy, I guess, must be fairly intelligent to know that it should consolidate the common code and only apply code that's different to each element. So this is pretty interesting. They offer up a few more details about how Alchemy works. Um, but you can go ahead and watch a preview video. I believe that's up here at the top. So I'll let you go ahead and watch that preview video on your own time. It's 20 minutes long. And let's say we watch the full thing right now, Nick. Let's just let's just play it then. We'll get comfortable. Maybe no. light some candles. Make some popcorn. Yeah. Make a uh, night out of it. <laughs> they also have a, have it split out into various chapters here so you can skip along. And then they also are collecting email addresses if you'd like to be notified when it hits the App Store. Uh, there's actually another tool that is similar to Macaw that we're going to be talking about later in the show. So I will leave additional thoughts for that one. Uh, I hope you don't mind I signed you up for their mailing list 20 to 30 times. I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we have a project called Joint.js. This is a JavaScript diagramming library. Now, you might wonder why we're talking about yet another JavaScript joint diagramming library. We've talked about that before. Well, this one lets you get interactive with your JavaScript diagrams. It also has a really, really easy to use API. Uh, now, if we take a look at the site, um, you can see it's got just a, a ton of features that it tells you about. Uh, but what's really neat, let's just get to the demos. Here's some demos right on here. Look, they got a, a chessboard that you can do right, uh, right, right in the browser there. You can even move the chess pieces. Well, you know, whatever. It's cool. It's just a diagramming library. Or is it? Look, you can create an organizational chart right there very, very easily in JavaScript. Um, now, I can't vouch for the accuracy of this chart since it has Bart Simpson as the CEO of this hypothetical company. Uh, I think we all know that would be Lisa. But anyway, see, they've got a ton of different demos, and there is a very, very thorough API uh, that you can see here on the left just how many different attributes and options you have. So um, anyway, this is just a, a really great piece of JavaScript, great library to use in your applications. And go ahead and check that out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or in iTunes, search for us at the Treehouse Show. Very cool stuff. Now, as I said previously, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, uh, I brought I brought the pain with that, Nick. That was rudely interrupted with some gold information. Thank you. That's true. It was it was worthwhile. Highly offensive. Awesome. Got me right in the feels. Anyway, there was this other app that I wanted to talk about that's very similar to Macaw. This one is called Dimensions. And actually, I should take that back. It's not very similar to Macaw. It actually does far less. 
but it's it's similar in the same vein that it allows you to uh, test responsive websites. Uh, so this is another tool that I think is, you know, once again outside the realm of your normal text editor, Photoshop, the tools that you typically think of when you think about web design and development. So I guess I actually have a question for the viewers, and that is, do you use any of these tools? I, I personally don't. I haven't really found a good flow to include a tool like Webflow or like Macaw. Um, but there's actually another one. I think it's called, uh, gosh, I can't think of the name of it. It's an Adobe tool, but Adobe is in this as well. So they're, they're making all sorts of tools like this where you can you know, manipulate things in this WYSIWYG interface. I'm not sure how I feel about that, just because of the way the code uh, has been historically from WYSIWYG tools. It's usually pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm kind of interested to know if anybody is actually using these and what their experiences have been like, because I feel like I have absolutely no pulse on the popularity of these things. Uh, what's nice about this one is it's a uh, Chrome app too. Yes. So that has, you know, far less for you to do than go all the way to the app store and fill out someone else's email address 20 times for the mailing list. Exactly. I, I, I really should emphasize that this tool is is different. I shouldn't lump it into the same category. It's actually uh, for responsive testing and doesn't generate any code, but it's still, you know, just yet another tool on top of all the other ones. And I'm kind of curious, you know, how many web developers and designers actually use stuff like that versus just resizing the browser yeah. or testing on devices. It seems kind of So tweet strange. Nick. That's right. You should tweet me at Nick RP on yeah. Twitter. I uh, I actually um, don't care how you guys work, so le leave me out of this. Don't CC <laughs> me on that one. You should CC at Jay Cipher. <laughs> so uh, next up, um, and I'm not, I'm not calling you this, Nick. This is an actual site that we're talking about called Sassmeister. It's okay. You can call me Sassmeister. I don't mind. would prefer to keep it professional. Okay. So Sassmeister dot com will let you try out SAS and SCSS and then it will show you the CSS that it compiles down to right next to you in the second column there. And after just a couple hours, you too can be a SAS Meister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, buy our free ebook. Um, so I've pasted in some SAS over on the left column there. And if you click on one of these things, you can see that uh, I have pasted some incorrect SAS in here, which is a little bit bizarre since I got it from the SAS website, as an example. Weird. Yeah, but um, trust me, for the most part, this works. I was messing around with it before the show. Um, I'm going to just leave that train wreck where it is. Check it out at sassmeister.com. Next up is typer.js, which is this really cool jQuery plugin that will actually type out code onto the screen which, you know, could be good for, Jason brought up the example of like a movie website or I don't know, it's just kind of a cool visual effect. I got another idea too. What's that? It could be for a restaurant website and as you scroll past an item, it types out some delicious sides you might want to get with it. That is clever. So if we go ahead and scroll down the page. Or perhaps a wine pairing. They have this little demo here where they're actually suggesting uh, different flowers to pair with your meal. Uh, but you can see here how it actually uh, types out the text and you know it does this all automatically. So it's a really cool jQuery plugin. Go ahead and check it out. It's typer.js. Very nice. Next up, over on the HTML5 Doctor website, uh, there is this absolutely great list of every HTML5 element as well as a short description of that element and a link to the documentation in the specification. How cool is that, Nick? Pretty um, cool. Yeah, this is this is just super thorough too, and um, you know it includes all the elements you would think would be there. You know, it's it's got the a link, abbreviation, address. It's separated by, you know, it, it's in order, alphabetical order, um, and there might be some that you don't even know existed. For example, did you know the WBR tag? Elements? I actually did know about that tag coincidentally, but yes, it is a very rarely used tag. This element represents a line break opportunity. That's right. Because you don't want to have any line break regrets in your HTML5 document. Very true. Yeah, so we'll have a link to that one in the show notes, and that's on the HTML5 Doctor website. Not too much to say about that. 
very cool stuff. Well, next up is Zero Clipboard. This is basically a way to copy things to the clipboard and then the user can go ahead and paste them elsewhere. Now, there's actually really not a very good way to do this. The only way you can do it is using Adobe, uh, Adobe Flash and this is basically a JavaScript interface for it. So it creates an invisible Adobe Flash movie and you can have, say, this text area here and you can go ahead and type stuff in and then you can say copy to the clipboard and now when I paste here, this is risky, <laughs> I go ahead and paste and you can see that it's actually just copied exactly what I typed in there. So pretty cool if you need a way for uh, your users to get stuff over to the clipboard. This is definitely one to check out because it is notoriously difficult. Yeah, it's cool how it works. It floats the invisible Flash movie on top of the DOM element of your choice. So that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I guess that's all we got for this episode, huh? Who am I on Twitter? Who are you on Twitter? Is that what you were about to that ask? That is. I'm at Nick RP. It's like you read my mind. We finish each other's Sentences. sandwiches. Oh. And I'm at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check us out on youtube.com slash go treehouse. You'll find the show notes there. You can also get us in iTunes. Search for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile development, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Sentences. Sandwiches.